But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make... Wash your hands. We're going to roast wash the... Wash your hands, please. I'm going to go wash the tomato, too. Thank you. It's going to taste like Dawn. <laughs> Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food for success. All right, so I've been starting my day with Tony Robbins quotes lately. He's trying to kind of find my reason to get up in the morning. Like, we got... If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. Is that a good Tony Robbins? It's the hands. But I also found out that that doesn't work at all. And so I have realized that my reason for getting up in the morning is breakfast. More specifically, it is this delicious breakfast burger. Burgers have been relegated to later in the day. I think that is unfair. Start making them for breakfast right now and improve your life through the power of burgers. We've broken the recipe down to three. <laughs> I've broken this recipe down to three easy steps. You can snag the time codes right there. We also got a full written recipe down in the description. Let's get cooking. Look at how big my hands are. Walk across coals, you weirdo. So I know you're thinking, Josh, a breakfast burger, isn't that just a breakfast sandwich with a sausage patty that has not been seasoned? Yes, but in a good way. You are not your expectations. Your expectations are you. You can just take anything and then you just flip the sentence around a little bit. You kind of like half Yoda and then you're at Tony Robbins. But actually it's a really cool thing. So we're taking bacon. We've already cooked this bacon and we are going to make a patty out of it with some beef because beef is what burgers is. In my head that came, I think I'm, the Tony Robbins stuff is scrambling my brain a little bit right now. So we're doing, we're taking cooked bacon and we're adding that to beef. I'm gonna try and like keep the essence of burgerhood here. Cause again, I don't want this to eat like a sausage sandwich. So I wanna get some nice like medium cooked beef with all that bacon in there. And then a couple of spices that are like reminiscent of a sausage patty, but we're not gonna salt it. So it's not gonna give it a saucery snap. I'm thinking a little dried sage. That's like a really common ingredient in breakfast sausage. I love thinking like a McDonald's Dunkin' Donuts breakfast sausage. And then we're gonna add some pepper, a little bit of onion powder, and we're gonna save salting this because we don't want that snap. And then you're just gonna mash it with your hands. All I can think about right now is what it would be like to have the giant Tony Robbins mitts. Imagine how much beef you could mash. Imagine how much garlic you could palm heel strike. Tony Robbins would have smashed an entire head of garlic. You should have gotten into cooking instead of scamming people. All right, so. <laughs> All right, so we got the bacon mashed up with the beef. I'm gonna make these into about a third pound patty. So I'm gonna be like nice, thick and beefy. I want the beef and the bacon here to really be the star, unlike in a traditional breakfast sandwich. And there is some precedent for breakfast burgers. Carl's Jr. had a really fantastic uh, breakfast burger that I would wake up to uh, almost every single day. But I think it can really be improved upon because they just use a normal burger patty and they slap some like bacon and hash browns on top of it. We're gonna kind of like play with that form a little bit and do some extra funky, fun, weird stuff here. So we got this here burger patty. That is all done. Now, condiments for this thing. Uh, there's a lot of routes you could go. I happen to love sauce. Sausage on brebs. <laughs> you ever have a mini stroke in the middle of a cooking show? So there's a lot of routes we can go with condiments here. I love ketchup on eggs in breakfast in general. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make. Wash your hands. We're gonna roast the. Wash your hands, please. I'm gonna go wash the tomato too. Thank you. It's gonna taste like Dawn. <laughs> you know, go ahead and. <laughs> Go ahead and palm heel strike some garlic so hard that the skin just kind of evaporates into your hand. I'm gonna chop that up a little bit. As I was saying, I really enjoy ketchup on eggs. And when you roast tomatoes, it creates like a really great, you know, kind of a hybrid between ketchup and tomato. You kind of get like halfway there, but it's like absolutely my favorite topping for a burger, uh, especially because someone brought this up in opinion casseroles recently that raw tomato on burgers sucks because it's like too juicy. So if you have a juicy burger plus raw tomato, you're getting double juicage and you don't want double juicage. And I agree with that. So I like roasted tomatoes. You gotta take the juice out of either the burger or the tomatoes in there because you don't want double juicage. Where's this going? This is going in here. Now we're gonna take these tomatoes and we're gonna, this is the, the one that smells like soap. We're gonna take these tomatoes and we're gonna add them into the bowl. Some people do like wash their vegetables with straight up like soap and water. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And we're just gonna add those to the bowl. We're gonna add a little bit of salt here. Salt's gonna get all the juices flowing. Like I mentioned, we need to remove the juicage and then lube them up with a little bit of oil. And then we're just gonna toss those and I'm gonna roast them flesh side down, 350 degrees for about an hour. Uh, do this ahead of time. I make myself just like a giant thing of roasted tomatoes all the time, just kind of keep in the house. You know, for anything, I feed them to my cat as a treat. Uh, that's not true, I don't know why I said that. They're probably poison for cats and I'm gonna get a bunch of people in the comments like, Josh poisons his cat. And I was like, no, I cook him sous vide chicken liver dinners that he hates. All right, so uh, I'm gonna pop this in the oven. Let that go. On to the next step or step to the next on. Only you can decide. 
Give me some condiments right now for the burger. I've done a, an ultimate perfect burger episode before. That is a burger that I absolutely love, but that's a lunch burger. And with that one, I topped with onion strings. I still love hitting that same sort of format with something crunchy to soak up all the sauce and any juiciness that we may get from the tomatoes of the burger. So instead of onion strings, what's like the breakfast version of an onion? Potato, the French translation for potato actually means breakfast onion. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a vegetable peeler and start slicing off thin strips of this potato here. And you might be asking, why, Josh, why didn't you say it like potato, French fried potato? And that's because I have not watched Sling Blade nearly recently enough. So we're gonna slice this off with a vegetable peeler and then I'm gonna stack these up and then just slice them into very thin ribbons. You could use a mandolin, but um, uh, I've had a couple of accidents to the point where I don't think that I ever need to use a mandolin again. They're great if you wanna uh, be a fancy chef like that. One dude from Burnt who makes little zucchinis on the fish or whatever. Hold on, I need to check the oil. You want the oil at 350? Oh my God, we're almost getting there. Wait, this is great news, this is great news. I, mean, I gotta go fast. So now I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna slice them super, super thin. And we're just gonna try and get some nice little crispy potato strings. You want to completely sort of dehydrate. It's essentially the same method of making potato chips, except we're making potato strips. Ah! So I need to concentrate. Give me a sec. <laughs> we need like elevator music for Josh concentrating. Drop those potato strips into the fryer. Get them nice and crispy. There you go. If they start sticking together and kind of create like a hash brown waka situation, you can sort of stir them around. These are gonna fry up for about three minutes. Then we're gonna pull them when they're nice and brown and crispy. And then we're gonna pop them on here, salt them up. And then we're gonna start making an omelet. I said and then, I might as well do it now I'm here. I don't know why I would wait. <laughs> We're making an omelet, because I'm also gonna put that on the burger. It's gonna have cheese in it, so it's both gonna function as the cheese and the egg for your breakfast. So we're gonna crack a couple eggs in there. I'm gonna add cheese directly to it, because again, I want all that flavor in there, and the cheese is actually gonna add the salt to the omelet. I'm also gonna add not chives. Normally I would add chives, Instacart did not deliver chives, and the Delta variant is running rampant through LA. So <laughs> The point is it's not worth it. You know, like uh, chives are better. It's, you know, it's chives are not better enough to get COVID. What the hell happened? What, this looks like a, a, a diseased lung that they show you in high school to get you to not vape. I changed it from smoke to vape to connect with the teens. These are looking great. Pop those out of the fryer and season them up with a little bit of salt. All right, uh, when you make an omelet, uh, there was a period in my life where I ate a three egg French omelet every night for about three months. Cause one, I loved just eating eggs alone at night, but two, it's a really fun technique to practice and it's a very cool dish. And I'm definitely gonna screw it up right now, but then I'm gonna probably lie and say that I didn't and act like everything's okay. So check it out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take about a tablespoon of butter and we're gonna get that melting over low heat. Whenever you make omelets, the goal is to try and prevent browning. Eat an omelet however you want, but for like a perfect French omelet of which this is not, this is going on a hamburger it's covered in cheese and green onions but I like to keep it a sort of nice pale color and get the curds to just set and kind of fold over on itself and keep like a nice sort of a, a juicy explosive egginess like a gusher, like an egg flavored gusher exploding in your mouth or Smucker's uneggable. All right, so we got the butter just nice and melted. Pan's not too hot. And then we're gonna add that. You don't wanna hear a sizzle when you add the eggs to the pan. The goal is to sort of like uh, turn this into an omelet. Of course it does, I just said it was an omelet, Jesus. The goal is to turn this into like a square. You wanna kind of stir this around to set the curds a little bit, and then when you see the egg curd set, you can start the fold-in process. All right, you know what you can do if you're really impatient? You just pop a pizza pan on top for like 10 seconds. Question. Yeah. Would that square pan not have worked? What do you mean? Oh, that one? Yeah. Oh, what a great pan. All right, so fold this into a nice little square, and then you gotta make like a cut. Oh, uh, no, it's not gonna work. Well, maybe if you like remove that, and then you can kind of fold that over. Yeah, I think this is working. I'm gonna cut out a shape. That was all pretty unnecessary. Uh, and then you do that, and then kind of flippity flap. All right, so now we got a perfectly square egg, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let it rest in this square pan with the 299J hook from uh, Ikea. I got a lot of these at home. Yeah, it would've been nice, huh? Anyway, we got our omelet, we got our potato strings. I'm gonna make a burger. All right, we got a cast iron pan smoking here. I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of vegetable oil and we are going to splap down. Oh no, salt it, salt it. We didn't salt the burger because we didn't want it to turn into a sausage. I prefer salting my burgers right before they go into the pan. And again, I like to do it directly on the paper. That way I can kind of like smash it in just a little bit. We're not doing a smash burger. Just wanna make sure there's enough surface area there to really get a nice crust. So I'm gonna let that cook for a couple minutes. I'm gonna go wash my hands, Nicole. So now while that's cooking, we are going to one salt the other side of it, doy. And then two, we're gonna start building up this burger. Nicole and I had about a 20 minute conversation discussing the best architecture of this burger. I do not remember what we landed on, so let's ad lib it. What we got here, we just got a little bit of hot sauce mayonnaise. Uh, this uh, is a really complicated recipe. The ingredients are hot sauce and mayonnaise. Josh, what hot sauce, Annie? What mayonnaise, both? 
You got country mayonnaise and western mayonnaise. It's an obscure Blues Brothers reference that means nothing. Never even seen the movie. We're gonna take our tomatoes that have lost about, what would you reckon, that was about 55% of the juices, that's great. We're gonna take two of these, kind of smash them right on there. And then we're gonna put, don't tell me. Red mayonnaise tomato bumped burger, bumped buh. Omelette, bumped bow. Potatoes, bumped bop. Mayonnaise bread, bumped bop. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this burger patty. Look at that beautiful crust on that right there. Now we're gonna pop a piece of cheese on that, and then we're gonna go ahead and follow the bump mop mba order of operations. That's again, bread, mayonnaise, tomato, burger, omelette, potato, mayonnaise, bread, bump bop mba. Burger's going, it'll, it'll be done in a sec. We're gonna title the video bump bop mba burger, <laughs> and then people are gonna be like, did Josh just hit his head on the keyboard? All right. I'm gonna pull that burger patty, get it nice and hot, sitting on top of those there wet tomatoes and the mayonnaise. Then remember, bum bop ma -ba, we're going with the omelet. That's the uh and the bum bop ma -ba. Got the nice omelet sitting on there. Then we're gonna take some of these nice crunchy potato strings. Beautiful, just sort of nest it on top. There we go, there we go, there we go. And then uh, mayonnaise bread ma -ba. Go ahead and pop that atop. And smushy smush down, and there is your ultimate breakfast burger. This looks fantastic, I can't wait to take a bite. All right, now you serve it like they do at fancy restaurants. Okay, and now you cut it in half with that knife. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of crunch. That's a lot of juice. Oh, that bottom bun disintegrated from the juice. That is exciting. Look at that. That is an appealing visual to someone like me. Hold on. Well, I showed it to you. Now I want to look at it. Oh, this is incredible. We got a nice, like, medium, medium well on that. I'm going to jump in. God dang, dude. One, this is unreal. You got all the cheese and the egg. That little bit of green onion coming through is great, but the star for me is this burger patty that's studded with bacon because it's like serving. When I say serving, uh, no, you get all the bacon studded in there, but it's still cooked like a burger patty. So you get all that crust on there, but you get that like slight seasoning from the breakfast sausage elements that we added to it with the sage and all that black pepper. This is stupid flavorful. It eats like a perfect hybrid between like a breakfast sandwich and a burger. I'm obsessed with this, but. It's not just for me to decide. I'm gonna go uh, attack someone with this burger at a random part of the office. You just got fooded, bro. You're on foodie. You just got fooded. Take that. <laughs> hey, Jack, wanna get a breakfast burger? Yes, I do. It's really right here. Hold on. You film yeah. me. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna feed it to you with a spork, except I'm actually not. I'm just gonna hold the spork near because I really want you to pick this up and eat it like an actual burger. Oh, okay. It's really good. For the first time, I'm not. Yes. I'll kind of mime it with the spork. Mmm. So we got actual like uh, bacon bits mixed into the burger patty, so it's not quite a sausage. And then we got a cheesy scallion omelet. We got crispy potatoes and roasted tomatoes on there, a little bit of hot sauce mayo. This is amazing. Are you gonna eat some of this or is this mine? I already ate half of it. Yes. I, I honestly ate it so fast that I don't think my body oh has my a chance God. to break it down into nutrients. I'm just, I'm proud of this. Yeah, one. yeah, this is amazing. Thank uh, you, what menu is it gonna be on? The Bumbapmaba restaurant? It's it's all about acronyms. Okay. <laughs> yeah, watch the episode to get the to get the joke. It's not even a joke, it's just me being awesome. dumb. Thank you for sporting me, Josh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jake, and Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. This is a weird angle. I'm gonna squat down. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes for our podcast, so hot dog is a sandwich, wherever you get your podcast. <laughs> Hit us up on, oh, this feels nice on the hips. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen. <laughs> Pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. Just like Jessica did, she said she and her boyfriend made the mac and cheese crust pizzas with their own two hands. And even though they're vegetarian, something, something, I forgot to read the rest of it. But thank you so much, Jessica, for supporting. Keep tagging. Thank you all for stopping by. See y'all next time. This is more depth than I've gotten in a while. <laughs> Look at this. Baby. I mean, you have true squat form. Look, Look at, at that. You. Crouching tiger, hidden burger. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Hill Strike tea now at mythical.com.